Welcome back, Petapixel viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. We've got a different lens for you today. We're looking at the Sony FE 24 to 50 F 2.8 G series. An interesting lens. This is not a G Master. It's designed to be compact and affordable and still give you a nice bright F 2.8 aperture. Let's talk about it a little bit more. But before we go further into this lens, you might notice something different about our video today. We're shooting this at 60 frames per second at faster shutter speeds. Is that because Jordan wants to do this as a stylized choice or is that because he forgot his ND filters at home? I'll let you be the judge. I think he's just trying to be trendy and cool like all the new kids. Okay, so back to this lens, a 24 to 50. I mean, that is absolutely a limited focal range. It does cover your most useful wide angle ranges though, but you don't see a lot of people making this. So why does this exist? Well, first off, it's compact and relatively affordable. It's really intended to fit on, well, not just cameras like this, but even smaller cameras like the Sony a7C II series, for example, but it's also giving us that f2.8 aperture without having the bulk weight and cost of something like the 24 to 70 G Master. Now I do right off the bat appreciate how compact this is. It's got a 67 millimeter filter thread on the front, 440 grams. I mean, less than a quarter of a knock sounds really small when you say it that way, but it's actually quite full featured. Decent manual focus ring. We do actually get a custom button. That's nice. Autofocus manual focus selector switch, but I wasn't expecting this. We actually get an aperture ring as well. You can set it for clickable or declickable. Might be really nice for video work. We'll test the breathing on this lens. Absolutely. This is also a weather sealed lens. So considering it's supposed to be affordable, compact, and accessible, it's actually got a lot of features. Okay, let's talk about autofocus now on this 24 to 50. Now, this does use twin linear motors, but it's not Sony's state-of-the-art, super powerful XD linear motors. And I think that's perfectly appropriate. I mean, even though this is an F2.8, it's not really the focal length range where we worry about fast focusing. I mean, this is a wide angle to normal lens as well. There's not really heavy glass elements to move. And so I'm finding the autofocus nice and snappy from near to infinity, perfectly acceptable for the work that I'm gonna do with this lens. So when we're out in the woods, one of our favorite bouquet tests is to actually get sunlight off of the river and the sun's been pretty spotty, but it did break out just for a second. So we got our bouquet test. So you can see here first off, a wide open at f2.8, the bokeh has a little bit of cat's eye in the corner. Definitely a distinct soap bubble look. I'm not noticing onion rings or anything, but definitely a very energetic kind of look to the bokeh. Now as I stop the lens down here, Sony has an 11 bladed aperture in this lens and they're fairly round, although I'm surprised that they're a little bit more polygonal than I expected. Still, I don't think it'll make much difference. Your backgrounds are gonna look nice and smooth. We're getting rid of that cat's eye effect in the corners. We are though still getting that soap bubble effect and I guess I feel like the bokeh on a bright contrasty day might have a little bit of energy, maybe even slight distraction to it. Okay, so for our macro shot, I found a pair of little sap testicles here. Isn't that cute? Who doesn't like sappy gonads? So. Anyways, it's a good macro test here. So this lens actually has a fairly impressive close-up capability, but it does its best work at 24. At 50 millimeters, I'm getting a little bit more working distance, which is nice with all this tree sap here, but I'm not getting as close as I could get at 24 millimeters. Now, here I'm getting about seven inches of, of actual distance from the sensor plane, but seeing as how this lens extends when you go to the wide, my working distance to the front of the element's like an inch. I'm very close. The hood's touching the wood. It's probably all sticky now, but I'm getting about 0.3 times Times magnification, basically just one three life size reproduction. So in a pinch, you get nice and close, get some good close ups. You do get that wide angle perspective pushback and it makes sticky gonads just look great. Okay, welcome to the ugliest light ever, but uh, why don't we talk about sharpness because test charts don't care if it's snowing outside. So looking first at 24 millimeters in the center at f2.8, very pleased with the detail and the sharpness, good contrast. Stopping down to f5.6 didn't really make much difference. 
The corners though, we focus at f2.8 specifically in the corners, you can see that they're still quite mushy. I think there's a lot of distortion being corrected for here. Stopping down to 5.6 though does help dramatically. The corners do get much better stopped down. So if I had a subject that was gonna shoot off of the center of the image, I'd absolutely stop down if I could. 50 millimeters, the centers look nice at f2.8, not bad. I feel maybe a little bit less contrast than we got at 24 millimeters. When stopping down to 5.6, I do see a slight improvement in the centers, but I'd still shoot this lens wide open at 50 millimeters. The corners here seem to be a little bit more consistent, a little bit less blur that we're getting at 2.8. They're pretty decent. They again, do get better at f5.6. And this lens does shoot, it's flat at shooting at 50 millimeters. So if I want to take a picture of a piece of artwork or something, that's where I would shoot it. Sony usually have really nice coatings in their lenses. Absolutely the same thing goes here with the 24 to 50. Contrast is good, even with bright light sources. We're not really seeing a lot of washout areas. We're not seeing any ghosting. Even stop down, there's no real ghosting problems to worry about. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna get any sunny landscapes today, but I would happily bring this lens along if I was. So on wider aperture lenses, we like to test for loca, that longitudinal chromatic aberration where you get color fringing in the foreground and background out of focus areas. And we are getting a little bit, as you can see here on our test chart, a little bit of color fringing, not bad. I mean, this will be a little bit difficult to remove in post, but for most of the situations like landscapes, if I'm shooting stop down, it's not gonna be an issue. Lots of depth of field, I don't think it'll be a problem. But shooting up close at 2.8, you might see some colors in the background and foreground. So our video shooter is going to appreciate this lens. Well, certainly I think compact wide angles like this are really nice for gimbal work when they're not too heavy. So that's nice. The 2.8 aperture is lovely. The declickable aperture ring is nice. But what video shooters aren't going to like is the breathing characteristics on this lens because there's a fair bit of it. So 24 millimeters is actually better. You can see here though our field of view is still changing a fair amount as we focus from near to infinity. Going to 50 millimeters and doing the same test, you can see it's rough. We're getting a really big transition in our field of view. So for stationary work, it's fine. But if you want to do any focus pulls or something, that field of view is going to change in a very distracting way. Now, Sony's answer to this is going to be to use breathing compensation, which is a feature they have in a lot of their latest cameras. And it's a great feature. It basically digitally corrects for the breathing by cropping into your video. But keep in mind, the more actual breathing that's present in the lens, the more it's going to crop that video. Let's also keep in mind that something like the 20 to 70 F4 lens has that extra wide angle to crop into, whereas this at 24 doesn't have as much. So, you know, I'm thinking about this lens and I'm struggling to figure out, you know, kind of like who it's for and where it's best utilized. I mean, for what we did today, I mean, it's a perfectly fine landscape lens, good optical performance. I just feel like the f2.8 aperture isn't that useful for this kind of stuff that we're doing today. I no normally shoot landscapes stop down. You know, we've got light, even a low light situation. I'd use a tripod with some depth of field and a slower shutter speed. I'd much rather have something like the Sony 20 to 70 f4 for this kind of stuff where I get the extra wide angle, the extra versatility, and we're looking at roughly the same size and price. Now, where I do see this lens being very effective, absolutely like a travel street photography kind of lens. You know, think about like the bazaars of Istanbul. I really wish I was there right now and not in this gray, boring hellhole. You know, think about like low light alleyways inside cafes and restaurants, getting grab shots. That's where that 2.8 would be really handy. And I like the light, small, compact nature of this lens for walking around all day. I can see this lens being an affordable event photography lens as well. You know, maybe you don't have the budget for the 24 to 70 G Master version two. This could do a very similar role. It would give you kind of the same versatile range. You do get that nice F2.8 aperture and it's good at F2.8. And then if I coupled this with something like a 70 to 200 F4, for example, I would still have a nice range covered, but I wouldn't be breaking the bank. No matter how you slice it though, it's an odd but interesting lens and hopefully this video helps you guys decide if this is the right lens for you. Leave your comments below, let us know what you think. Check out the uh, podcast, same YouTube channel, or you can listen to it on all your favorite podcasting apps. It's called the Petapixel Podcast, go figure. Also subscribe and click that notification bell if you haven't already so that we can see you soon with more episodes on Petapixel.